So welcome to the last uh, session of the fifth cycle of the Rubismo Cafe Talk. My name is uh, Justin Casimir. I'm the coordinator of the Rubismo project. And uh, this cycle is dealing with agriculture and, and carbon. Uh, if we can go to the next slide, Tula. Absolutely. Uh, give you a uh, little feedback on what we've been talking about uh, during this cycle in, in April. So we had first a, a short introduction on what is carbon neutrality in agriculture. Then we've seen it's, it's both about reducing your, your carbon emission, but also uh, storing more carbon in uh, with different agriculture practices. So last week we had, we focused on fossil free energy that was about reducing the emissions. And today Tula will talk more about uh, increasing the carbon in the soil, if I'm not mistaken mistaking too much. Um, so all the videos will be uh, available on the YouTube channel uh, in a few weeks. So then you will be able to, I don't know, have an, a look at, at them again or maybe use them in different contexts. And yeah, I just give the floor to my colleague, Tura Roberg. Yes, thank you very much. Uh, and um, so now we go from uh, reducing fossil fuel emissions from agriculture to actually into a pathway to a climate positive future by achieving negative greenhouse gas emissions. And I will um, show one method for this, which is to use biochar. And um, and maybe you've heard about biochar, but I will give an introduction here. It, we don't have much time, so it will be quite brief. Uh, but I hope it will be interesting for all of you, and maybe you will learn something new. Uh, I will uh, introduce you to how it can be used in agriculture and why. So um, the, the thought of using biochar, um, well, maybe it has been occurring in many countries because we have used this technique of slash and burn in many countries. The first picture you see on the left there is uh, from uh, Am the Amazon um, soils, which are really poor in nutrients normally. They leach a lot. They are old soils. But uh, it, it can be seen that for more than thousands of years back, the, the um, indigenous people used biochar to, to uh, as a... As a um, structure as, as a method to, to uh, capture nutrients and water to avoid leaching and to actually enrich the soils. And these soils have been uh, exported and sold nowadays as really fertile soils. The picture you see in the middle is from, from Sweden when the Finnish people came to, to northern Sweden and they used kind of the same method to, to burn forest, to clear forest. And this um, method actually mineralized the nutrients in a fast way and it increases the pH, making the soil very fertile. And um, yeah, you also we can see uh, structural changes also in clay soils. But these, um, these examples are more on sandy light soils where, where, the, where the soil yeah, this method keeps the nutrients from just running off when it's raining a lot, especially in the in the jungle. Um, we have seen in, in Swinda some places where you can see uh, wh where the first iron production was started uh, and the soils were roasted. You can still see carbon in these places and it was really common in the 1600s. So there are many places in the forest where you where you see this just 400 year old carbon uh, beds. Uh, which is a, a, um, proof that this is a long lasting method for keeping carbon in the soil. And what does it look like today? Yeah, this is a very modern pyrolysis plant where uh, the feedstock normally is um, um, agricultural waste or park waste, or um, it, you can also use um, uh, seaweed that floats up on the beaches. You can use um, toilet waste for making pyrolysis. And, and this method is anaerobic. So it's incomplete combustion in, in uh, 500 to 900 100 degrees Celsius. Uh, and and the, with this high temperatures, you can um, remove the cadmium 
in products such as uh, the slurry from toilet waste or, or seaweed that is contaminated, for example, but you keep the phosphorus, which is, uh, it leaves a byproduct, as you see here on the right, the biochar, which can be a very uh, valuable asset to use in agriculture. But there are also um, gases produced, syn gas, which you, you circulate back into the system and it actually heats the, the, the burner. You also get a pyrolysis oil that uh, you can use in, in different ways. Uh, and this, the heat that is produced, you use for district heating. So this kind of plant is, is only interesting really if, you, if, you have, if you're heating a city or if you have a lot of uh, buildings in, um, on, in agriculture, for example. There are some farms in Sweden that uses this type of, of uh, pyrolysis plant. Uh, and then it's also both for heating and then you get the biochar that you can use in your own agriculture. Uh, so uh, the carbon, you, you actually, uh, there are some emissions going up in the air as carbon dioxide, but you, you uh, have a carbon content of up to 90% in the biochar. It can also be lower, of course. It depends on how much oxygen comes into the process and how long time um, the, the material is in the, in the process. There is also a possibility to capture the carbon dioxide from the fumes and then you have this addition that you would call CCS, which is carbon capture and storage. And it's something that is spoken about a lot in the media nowadays. So how, what are the possibilities in agriculture? How to use this biochar? What are the opportunities? Well, there are loads of opportunities actually. Um, in this picture, you see um, um, some green text and some red text, very little red. The red is um, negative effects in agriculture and the green are positive effects. Um, you can see, for example, if you put biochar in the field, you, there has been some, uh, in, in some conditions you get higher yields, especially in the tropics where, where it rains a lot. Uh, you get uh, less um, N2O gases, laughing gas, in, in, the, um, in the stables. You can see that um, you get less ammonia coming out from, from the manure. You can also feed the animals with, uh, with uh, biochar to reduce uh, diarrhea in pigs, for example. Um, you can see in biogas that there are lots of publications um, but it's not used so frequently yet. Uh, the, 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 in the biochar as a container for the microorganisms in the biogas process. Uh, you can also use it in, in uh, tree plantations where it has been seen to, to increase yields. And if you have a manure storage, there has been um, a lot of studies showing that you can reduce uh, greenhouse gases and the ammonia coming out from, from the slurries. And yeah, and you can see that the various positive effects, but the problem that we see is if you harrow it down shallow, shallowly on the, on the soil surface, is that you get a more black soil and this uh, absorbs more heat from the sun. So it, actually it would be positive to incorporate it further down into the, into the soil. And if we look at additional uses for, for biochar, then um, I mentioned biogas, I mentioned agriculture and livestock, <clears throat> but you can also use it, uh, for example, in, um, in the cities. In <clears throat> the picture we have here, we have green roofs with sedum um, coverage. And this as uh, the biochar is a very lightweight material <clears throat> that can hold some water. Um, you have a very positive effect on, on the vegetation on green roofs. And <clears throat> on the bottom page, sorry for, for my voice. On the bottom picture here, we can see how it's used in, um, when you combine it with gravel, with macadam, I think it's called in English as well, to maintain a good structure that um, is porous and it uh, helps trees in the city environment to to retain 
well to, to have access to more water more nutrients and and oxygen which they need for the root so they won't suffocate and uh, and die and uh, this has been used really um, successfully in stockholm and i will show you some pictures after this one where you see a bit more of details around it but like for example when asphalt is coming closer and closer to the trees that we see in the cities, you have a problem that they just live for like 15 years or they, yeah, they live in a steady decline. But if you do these kind of changes, there is a big possibility that you can maintain their, their life many, many years longer. Um, I also added one circle up here with the, yeah, the urban tree plantations and in Sweden they are, they are trying to replace the plastic grass in football fields and put uh, green grass. It, this is not agriculture, but it's uh, it's anyway uh, applications for biochar. Um, so biochar can keep nutrients and water and uh, help the football grass to um, to survive the big stress of football players. Uh, yes, I, yeah, and and this retention of water and nutrients is due to this porous structure that we see here, which is also why it is so good to to um, eat active carbon when we have problems in the stomach or for the animals when they have problems sorry the other animals as we are animals as well um yes and this uh, there are some practical handling issues with biochar it's dusty uh, and also it can self-ignite if it's if it's not dampened uh, and this I mentioned before with the uh, with albedo that is increased and it elevates the pH as it contains a bit of ash. There are more minerals in it than uh, the, the feedstock. And this needs to be considered. Often it's it's a positive effect, as we can see here. There is a this is just an example. It's not agriculture again, but if you would have, for example, a farm and you would have some forest belonging to the farm, which is quite common, at least in northern Europe, then you you um, you could have use uh, in replantation of forests as well. In the first um, diagram that we see here, it's from 2016. Uh, they have compared one, two, three, four, five, five different species of trees. And in two years after, when they uh, that they when they added the biochar, you can see that there are huge variations. The standard variation is, is very big, standard deviation. Uh, but you can still see that the biochar uh, trees have grown better. They have increased in um, area more than the other trees, the control, except for the Carpinus betulus. So it's, it's interesting, but it, um, yeah, I would like to see what the trees look like now. I haven't seen, um, um, how do you say, uh, conclusion from 2020, for example. But I, I will try to get it. And if you, if you would like to have the information, then you can contact me afterwards. Um, so what are the additional reasons for using biochar? Well, uh, we, are not, we are not decreasing our car di carbon dioxide emissions as much as we should do in Europe and in many other places in, in the world. And to, we are not even um, approaching the two degree increase uh, level. So we really need to work harder, both with decreasing the use of fossil fuel, but also the storage of uh, carbon dioxide from the atmosphere. And how do we do this? Well, yeah, stop the fossil fuel use. And then uh, as it is today, we burn fossil fuel that we take from from the bedrock it goes up with carbon dioxide in the atmosphere but if we store the if we capture the carbon dioxide at the chimneys and store it in the ground this is called ccs then we have a zero emission if we can uh, instead of using a fossil fuel use biofuel and uh, we release uh, carbon dioxide into the air we also have this zero result but if we use renewable fuels and we also capture the carbon dioxide at the chimneys and we store it in the bedrock or as biochar and um, then we have negative emissions which is the positive future that we need to approach if we also use instead of the forest if we can use waste from from um, the society 
and recycle this carbon back into agriculture, then we have a, then maybe we can um, leave the forests to grow longer and actually store more carbon dioxide during their life cycle. How much time do I have? Yeah, uh, I'm not sure if I, I will go th quickly through this because I think I'm exceeding my time. Uh, there is a guideline, European Biochar Certificate, um, that we can use. There are also national guidelines in different countries, but this, uh, this, these guidelines are very good uh, as they, they look at how the process of, of making biochar is made, what uh, raw material we use, the carbon content, the degradability, they um, analyze um, heavy metals, the porosity, um, accumulation of PAH, uh, polyaromatic uh, hydrocarbons, and, and more, which um, certifies what we actually have in the carbon that the buyer gets. And these certificates need to follow the product. So, so we actually, we're sure that this is a good product that have the required assets that we need. That we acquire. I, I wanted just to show this how much um, the biochar market in Europe is worth and uh, the leading European countries which are uh, UK, France, Italy, Germany and Spain and um, um, it's the main sector is in the feedstock uh, mixed into fodder as a f food additive to animals in meat production. I've, I've um, read that it's in cow production and that in Germany that you're not allowed to put biochar in the soil. So they actually go through, through the cow and then I think they are allowed to add it as mixed in into the manure, into the fields again. So it's worth uh, 2 billion euros in globally, but in Europe 0.5 euros in 2020. And it's uh, expected to increase a bit, but I think it could increase so much more as there are so many areas of applications. And um, as I have so little time, uh, you are <laughs> so welcome to contact me and you're also welcome to ask questions or add additional information or correct me if I've said something that uh, might have been uh, wrong. And I thank you very much for your attention.